Yes, there's another problem with my Porsche 911. So, I had to call the breakdown services out to it because, did you hear that? It started making that noise. And so I pulled over, called the AA, they came and checked it out, got it up on a jack, had a look underneath, and the man reckoned there might be a problem with my anti-roll by, I think, but he thinks that he might have moved slightly. And so when I go over a bump, it catches on part of the subframe or the um, suspension arm. So, oh! oh, oh, that noise is seriously horrible. I'm just hoping it's nothing too serious. What I'm doing now is taking the car to Design 911 in Essex, which is where I had the suspension fitted originally. Gonna get them to check it over. I'm also gonna have a few things done to the car. That's the reason this is behind me. More about that later. So yeah, I'm gonna get some more parts fitted, get a service, but above all else, try and get rid of that noise. That, that noise is not good. Ah. So I've arrived at Design 911 here in Brentwood, Essex. They're just taking my car in, they're gonna get it on the ramp, and we're gonna find out what the problem is. The guys got straight to work trying to find the cause of the noise. They inspected the front anti-roll bar, but it didn't appear to be causing the problem after all. So, with the car on the ramp, every nut and bolt was checked, but bizarrely, everything seemed fine. Design 911 technician Gary was stumped. So, he continued to look for the problem while the car was serviced. I'm with Ben, and we've got the oil filter out the car, so one of the things we're gonna do is check it for any metal debris. If there's metal in there, it's clearly a very bad sign, isn't it, Ben? Yeah. It could mean that the, what, the IMS bearing is failing? Possibly but this one actually looks okay, and obviously your oil is quite clean, so you should be safe for now. As the guys filled the engine with oil, I unwrapped the package I brought with me in the back of the car. Now, one of the things I'm gonna replace on the car are these brace bars, and if you have a look, this thing is supposed to provide some kind of torsional rigidity to the car, but it's, yeah, look at that. You can probably see that it's all rotted through. So, I've been on eBay, and I picked myself up some replacements because if you try and buy these three Porsche, they're a couple of hundred quid. Got these from Germany and they're about 20 quid each. So two of these, one on each side, which you're gonna fit and maybe make the car a little bit stiffer. I also plan to make the car stiffer with a performance engine mount kit with a choice of street, sport and race bushings. Once made up, they look rather smart and are an easy replacement. Well, if you have a hydraulic ramp, so we've got one of the old engine mounts out and I've really got to show you how different they are to these aftermarket ones. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, that is just, yeah. It means the engine is pretty much just rocking about and acceleration and deceleration. This one, yeah, there's no give. I don't think it really matters whether you go for sport, street or race. It's gonna be way stiffer than this thing. <laughs> Boing. The new mounts were fitted and looked pretty cool in place. Next was to install the brace bars I brought with me. Meanwhile, Gary was still flummoxed by the cause of the suspension knock, but he had an idea how to find it, which required the car's wheels to go back on. What we're going to do now is check the car's geometry because so far, investigations underneath the, the front of the car, looking at the suspension components, doesn't really suggest the cause of the knock, so a little bit stumped right now. So we're gonna set the car up, make sure it's all straight, and then take it for a test drive and see where we go from there. Halfway through the setup, Gary made a discovery. I think we may have found the source of the knocking noise. So Gary, if you wouldn't mind just bouncing the car up and down, watch this here. Now if you look at it on the other side, That's exactly how it should be, nice and solid. It appears that the top mount, which was actually new, not so long ago, has somehow collapsed and it's caused this problem. So, looks like I'm gonna have to fit a new top mount. Bizarre. Have you ever had this happen before so soon? No, <laughs> I've never seen that before, no. I must admit, especially the new one. I've never seen it in an old one. Gary set about removing the faulty part so we could inspect it. Oh my gosh, that is, that is not a good thing, is it? What do you reckon happened there? I don't know. Because it's a new top mount, wasn't it? A bit of a malfunction, yeah. Empty part, or... 
That is your problem. The top mount bushing had totally sheared. However, it was hard to spot this without the weight of the car on it. That's why Gary couldn't find the problem with the car on the ramp, and probably why the AA man made the misdiagnosis, as he too had the car up on a jack. Here we have the replacement part. I'm going to put it straight in, and hopefully this time it will hold together. Gary fitted the new top mount and put everything back together in a matter of minutes. Job done. Well, not quite. The final thing I'm going to have done to my car is get some new tyres fitted to it. And I've gone for Yokohama Advan Neova AD08Rs. I've got them fitted to my Mazda MX-5. They're absolutely blooming brilliant. They're almost like cut slicks, but they've got enough tread depth that you can clear water with them, so you don't go sliding about all over the place when it's wet. But they have a really, really thick sidewall, so you get nice response and feel through them. They're a really good tyre. It didn't take long for the guys at Design 911 to swap the rubber over and get the wheels back on the car. So I've had all the tyres replaced, the wheels have been balanced, the wheels have gone back on the car, been loaded down, they're just being talked up now. And that's it, the car is done. All it remains for me to do is pay the bill and then drive the car home and see what it's like. So while I settled up, the guys did a final geometry check and I was good to go. Right then, here we go. Test drive on the way home. See how this car feels. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's not doing that annoying knocking over bumps. The back end feels different for sure. It just feels like the back and the front are joined together better. Why would they not fit these engine mounts as standard? It doesn't seem to be noisier or more vibey. And there's a roundabout up here. Let's just try it over the roundabout. The steering feels better on these tires. Let's try this. Let's Fairs around here. Blimey, yes. These tyres are lovely. I can tell already. And they're not even scrubbed in. These tyres are wicked. You can tell they've got a firmer, stiffer sidewall. Those engine mounts are a great idea. The tyres, lovely. And thankfully, the suspension's fine again. I love this car. I love it. If you enjoyed this video please like it and share it and subscribe to our channel also click on the windows for more videos about my 911